Hi everyone, Tams here. Today I'm going to be talking more about a journal project that I have mentioned on and off throughout the summer. This is my homemade garden journal that I have been working on making by hand from scratch all throughout the summer when I have had time. The cover of the journal is actually made from a cereal box and I will link below the video that pretty much kick-started this whole thing off. It's an older video by Jenny Belly, and she is like the queen of junk journaling to me, and she has an entire video series on how to turn a cereal box into a journal, and also the binding. She shows a lot of that stuff. I just use a very simple binding. All right, and so let's get into it. Okay, the look of my journal is intentional. There's two reasons for me having this journal. I have watched a lot of videos where people make beautiful junk journals, just gorgeous, and they do flip throughs, but there's never anything written in the journals, <laughs> or it's hard to find. And I, if I was gonna go through the trouble of putting all this together, I really wanted to make sure I had a purpose for it. So this serves as bo both my garden journal and I'm just documenting several things about my gardening. And it also serves as a prop at Halloween because the few people I found that were filling up their junk journals with, with really cool information were a lot of people that are making their own book of shadows or grimoires or what have you. There's a ton of great videos online with that. And so I decided to mash up my love of watching junk journal videos and grimoire book shadows videos. And so voila, I have a garden grimoire. The paper that I used, what, they are signatures. There's four signatures in this book. And these were signatures that were in a journal that I had taken apart already. But I wanted to distress the papers so I did use some coffee staining, some tea staining, but actually, to be honest, I found that my best friend in all this were these Tim Holtz de-stress inks. They're, they come in all different colors, and they just made life really easy for me as I was trying to distress the paper. Now, what happened was once I distressed the paper and I, I started to try to write with my calligraphy pen and the ink would just bleed horribly. I'll show you an example here. If you look, let's see, at this herb section, you can see the ink was bleeding. So for the bulk of the writing in this book, once I had distressed the pages, I had to switch to my trusty Micron pen. And I do a lot of just uh, handwriting practice. So these, if it looks like calligraphy, it's not. It's just a trick I do with a black marker. And if you are interested in that at all, I can make another video on that. But just wanted to point out that because of the paper, once it was distressed, I did have to move to a marker. So all the writing you will see in this book, there are some entries that start off with a calligraphy pen, but it just started to bleed so much I had to switch to this. All right, I have four sections, like I said. The very first section is all about my garden. So here in this section, I've got things like my physical garden location, a little bit about me, I'm not gonna share all that. I also have a section where I plan to sketch out the butterflies that we are seeing, as well as the birds that we are seeing in the garden. And then I have another section that is keeping track of all the plants that have been given to me. My garden, I've been so lucky this year. I've had so many people give me cuttings from their garden, transplants. I haven't even filled, this is going to be filled all the way up once <laughs> I've finished putting everything in there because I was gifted over 60 plants this summer. It's just been a wonderful experience. The second section is all about herbs and botany. So um, I have a section I write up a little bit about herbs, all kinds of herbs, and I usually include something fun like the folklore and the mystical properties of herbs throughout the ages, and then I also usually include some type of recipe. 
that you can make with the herb. So like these are cookies for lavender. And then for things like basil, I've got like pesto, a really good pesto recipe. Uh, the next section is about the cycles of the year. That's where it starts to get a little bit um, on the grimoire side because I love the uh, old ancient, um, the history of the holidays that we se we currently celebrate. And so this is my interpretation of what's called the Wheel of the Year. And if you research this, it's it's very interesting because it lines up with a lot of things that we learn in astronomy, like the solstices and the equinox and things like that. And it's fun to see how we've built off of this to form our current uh, holidays. For instance, Yule is now Christmas. Ostara is now Easter. Very interesting. So I have a section for each of the holidays. And to give you an idea, we're currently in Maybon. Okay, so I'm going to flip over to Maybon. And I include a little vintage photo for each one. I have not finished writing what I want to say about Maybon. But I'm including um, recipes that are fun to make this time of year and also a craft. So for instance, this time of year, my mom usually makes her apple dapple cake. So I have included that. Included that. It's very good. And also a recipe for some potpourri and some ways to give, them, give that as friends. Two friends. Ugh, can't talk. And then the fourth section, we're having a lot of fun with this. It's called Secrets of the Garden. And this is probably the section that's going to be open on my work desk when we finish decorating for Halloween because we get, we have a lot of fun here. We get into like the elements and I've found some wonderful, you know, little poems online or either I've written some myself about calling the elements. And also in this, this section, I have actually buried some things in the garden. So there are clues for the little ones to find. And they have to use their compass and they have to solve some riddles to find the garden treasures that are buried. So that gives you an idea of what's going into this section. But yeah, we finally have it all ready and we're starting to use it. Of course, it's not completely full, as you can tell. But I did want to share with you um, how we did it and what we're using it for. And I hope you enjoyed. As always, I will link um, the video for how to make this below as well as my favorite tools while making this, um, this journal. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.